Hopefully you're having a sexy Saturday. Lon is painting outside. He's painting the back deck and I'm gonna surprise her right now. Definitely gonna have to do two coats. I really like your form. You're like Mr. Miyagi. Well, if you don't go the same way, you're gonna have funky breast, breast, breast strokes. Breast strokes? Yeah, with accordion flip. Can you say wax on, wax off as you do wax it? Wax on, wax off, but. Uh, what kind of uh, accent is that? It was whatever that came out of my mouth. <clears throat> wax on, wax off. Wax on, wax off. Say hi, Lana. Hi, Lana. No, you're live. Oh, that's always nice. Yeah. So look, y'all. The deck's not done, but we whacked it, we crushed concreted it, and now we're just gonna let it settle for a while, and then I'm gonna level it again and then put some weed barrier, and then we're gonna use these these little sand things, right? So you go like this, hi -ya. You go hi-ya, hi -ya. And then you level it out with that little white sand, right? And so Lana has been working really, really hard. Oh, look, and then we put gravel here. That's pretty much done, right? Excuse you. So Lana pretty much, uh, what, did, what, did, what did you do with this white stuff? You sand, you pressure washed it. I pressure washed it. Right? I filled in, I actually use some, um, gosh, what's it called? It's used in the bathroom for hearing the tiles, so we'll see if it is work. Concrete work ninja goo? No, it's, um, it's a <coughs> tile thing, I forgot what it's called. Omnimax is, I think, what it's called. In there. And then she got this special paint color, uh, concrete garage floor paint, right? And then we're going to do this other one. We finished this right here. This is pine shavings. We're gonna do the same thing to this. And uh, we finished this. Check that out. All of these we got for free. So we're gonna figure out what we're gonna do, but we got some exciting news. So this is done. And today we worked out with a rad ninja that owns a bobcat. And I'm not sure if this is gonna, uh, because I'm on Wi-Fi, let's hopefully this doesn't go off. But we have somebody coming out tomorrow that is going to grate all the way from the street. All of this. Oh, look what we did here. See? See what we did here? And then I made this rad little bench. Lana, you gotta give me credit for this bench. I did, I gave you heavy this credit. This staircase. Yesterday. I made that, y'all. Look. Yeah! See? Look at that. Look at that. How cool is that? And look at so. We've got gravel here. We haven't finished it yet, but we go, hiya, right? All I did, I it was it was one long board, and then I cut it in four pieces. Look, look how straight that is, y'all. Look how straight that is. I'm really, really proud of myself for that. And it's really, really level too. But what we're going to do is check this out. Oh, look at this little lizard. Oh, did you see him jump, Lana? A lizard jumped from the fig tree to the deck like he jumped like a flying squirrel but a flying lizard so anyways check this out this is what we're gonna do this entire piece of land right here all the way down I would walk down there but I don't want to lose connection this right here see the top of the roof that's nine and a half feet to this fence okay it's ten and a half feet from the fence to the house but we have a semi flatbed coming that has to squeeze through here nine and a half feet, nine feet all the way through here. So we're gonna have a uh, rad ninja come and he's going to level all the way from the street. All of this, anywhere where you see green, he's gonna come level all of this. So we're gonna put this, that gravel right there. We're gonna continue all the way through here, all the way up to there, all of this, all of that, all of this. And this right here is where the eight foot or the 40 by eight foot container, shipping container is going to be. Now here's a little secret. See this fence? Well, city code says you're only, you have to have five feet 
from a privacy fence, right? Well, here's five feet right here. See, that's five feet right here. This is four feet and it won't fit because it will hit that tree. So we're only gonna do four, like four and a half feet. And then hopefully we can take this fence down and put a new, a new white fence. But all of this, y'all, this guy's gonna come and grade all of it. And he's gonna be here tomorrow at 10 a.m. And um, he's gonna grade it. He's gonna take all, I wanna walk back there, but I don't wanna lose connection. But anywhere where you see grass, all the way up to right where the end of that piece of wood is laying down there, okay? All of that right here, here I'll walk over here, to here, to the fence, is gonna be flattened out with, and then I'm gonna put crushed concrete, right? All, all of that back there, y'all, all of that, okay? And then we're gonna put gravel. And then all of that is gonna be her backyard. And if you can see, the reason why we're doing this is because see the corner of that deck, right? And see the tree? That's nine feet. So the reason why we're doing that, because that shipping container is gonna go from here. I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna lose connection, but I'll come back. So that, that shipping container is gonna come here. That's gonna be the front. It's gonna go all the way and it's gonna squeeze right between this tree. If I lose connection, I'll back up to that green stake right there. See that green stake? So then all of that behind that green stake, all the way over here is gonna be level to this tree so if someone owns um, a camper, a boat, or if you want to park cars here, you could drive between this oak tree from the side of the house, because this is where it's going to start. So you have all this area from the side to drive your boat, your camper, your car, all the way through here, between this tree, between the deck, all the way to the back, and then it will be enough for three cars. And so what's cool is, and see I finished this too. See back here? See how I did that, see? So that, that granite, is gonna, he's gonna layer all of that too. So it's gonna be all gravel layered all the way from that piece of wood all the way to here. But what's cool is, see, there's the stick. So that's gonna be the end of the shipping container all the way to there. Now what we're gonna do with the shipping container is it's 40 feet long. Well, I don't know. All right, let me flip this around. Okay, so I'm like new to this, but I don't know if you've ever bought like a, um, a storage shed but they're super expensive and they're like little barbie houses so a lot of them are like four grand and you get like a 12 by 10 or you get like an 8 by 8 some of them are like forty six hundred dollars five grand but what we're gonna do is is we're going to make here i'll show you one more time we're gonna make so it's 40 feet long so here's the stake right there that's the back and it's gonna go to about right here so we're gonna take 12 feet of the shipping container, right? And we're gonna we're gonna um, frame it all out. We're gonna do the spray insulation. We're gonna do um, uh, uh, drywall and all that. But she's gonna have 12 feet of it, 12 feet by eight as a storage, right? So then she's gonna have 28 more feet as an Airbnb, you know, or a nice little like with stove, toilet, queen bed, all of that stuff. So. Think about it, y'all. Think about it. she's gonna she's she's doing so much with this. Number one, she's getting like her backyard totally revamped, but now she's gonna have a storage and a cool little Airbnb. So very very excited. And this is stuff that I've never done before. Um, I took down most of that stuff. I cut that tree. I cut I cut I cut I took two big trees out of here all by myself, y'all. Look at that, look at the sky. That used to be all trees, giant trees. Look how big these trees are. Look at that. And I think we might have to take this one. See this? But there's a power line right there. So I'm, I'm a little bit afraid. Like I can Tarzan that, but I, I could take that little piece off first and then maybe this piece, but I don't know. And then we have that swing over there. See that little swing over there that I want to hang from here. But, uh, and we have these cool little pavers that once we get the gravel, we could do some cool stuff with this. But yeah, a lot going on. I didn't, th I didn't even think we were going to go live. Um, let's see what Lana's doing. Can you make some progress, Lana? But look how much space this that, with these pavers, y'all. If you do it yourself, you save a lot of money. And I'm just letting them sit for a little bit. And then we're going to finally set them. But uh, 
really, really cool with this. All right, here's a question, y'all. So look at, there's like this thing right here that stuck out. So I couldn't put a tile there. What do you all suggest that we put there? In the comment section, what should we put there? Because there cannot be a paver there. That one paver, good thing it wasn't two or three, but there's never gonna be a paver there because it's not gonna be level. Yeah, come lift it, Lana. Don't hurt yourself. Really? Yeah. So, what do you think we should put there? That hole or that emptiness is always going to be there. What should we put there? Look at those guns. Let's see those guns again. Actually, let's see the back. Look at the back. You're like a bikini fitness model. Look at that. Yeah, I've done that. Don't hurt yourself for real, though. So I'm look. That donut doesn't even need to be there. And there's actually space to put a, t a broken tile and create a small. Right. I mean, we could we could put like some stuff, but if we don't put a tile, what should we put there? I'm not even gonna make recommendations. I want you all, if if we cannot do anything with that, what should we put there? All right, maybe I will make some recommendations. Don't leave it. All right, I'll, what should we put there? Um, what else? Oh, I got some news, I got some news. Look at all this stuff, y'all, isn't this crazy? So those railroad ties, right? So those two railroad ties are eight and a half inches long, okay? The shipping container is 40 by eight. So when the flatbed truck comes, and we have all this layered in that bobcat and all this is gravel, right? Crushed concrete and all this green is gravel. I need to bury right here. I need to dig a foot and a half trench, which is basically nine feet wide. And then I'm gonna put this, this stone in there, make sure it's level. And then I'm gonna put that railroad tie right there. And then at that green stake right there at the end where her, you know, 12 by eight storage you know she shed will be i need to do the same thing there so there'll be a rail tie there because the shipping containers are built for like the sea and for shipping and so you only need support on the four corners but i got those railroad ties for 20 bucks a piece y'all and they're eight and a half inches so i need to dig a foot and a half put crushed concrete put some gravel there and then when the flatbed comes right before he slips it off i need to pull that railroad tie i really don't know how i'm gonna do it but i'm gonna try um I think that's it. Oh, I got, okay, so check this out. This is new. Um, Lana's dad is gonna pick me up right now. Um, no one really, well, only a few people know this. So you all know how I was sponsored by Pedigo, right? For two months, and then they're gonna give me a bike every week. Well, I rode one bike for like three weeks, and um, she needed it back for an event. And so Lana's dad made me aware of these rad bikes. I can't even make this up. They're called rad power bikes. And they're like pretty much half the cost. And so I'm still gonna uh, support Pedigo um, and I'm still gonna leave it up as a sponsor in the group. And I'll still wear the, shirt, wear the shirt once in a while because they are awesome, awesome bike. Just unfortunately, they're just a little bit too pricey um, for, for me at the moment because you know with the fundraising, the funds that I've already got, I need to buy a whole bunch of stuff. I already bought a tent. Um, I bought a, um, oh no, I'm looking for a, a mattress for underneath the tent, but I bought some bike stuff too. So we basically ordered, Lana's dad and myself ordered rad powered bikes. Um, they've got the fat tires. I don't know if they're the same quality as Pedigo, um, but what we did is, is we purchased two together. We got a $200 discount, free shipping in the US, and then if we wanna buy a third, it's $100 cheaper and no tax, right? So between the two of us, I think it was like, I think it was like 1300 bucks a bike, and it's an electric bike. I don't know if it's the quality of Pedigo, um, but they're called rad bikes. They're called rad powered bikes. And our group is ridiculously raw authentic. And uh, you know, our hashtag is raw and rad. So Lana's dad is picking me up today, probably in the next hour, and they've already been delivered at his house. So I'm gonna go live and, and we're gonna put these bikes together. They delivered and you have to put them together. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it together and I'm gonna add all of my accessories to the bike. I'm gonna ride it around for the next 43 days. And then I'm gonna, um, take it back apart and then go to FedEx freight shipping, break it down, I'm gonna keep the box that it comes in and then I'm gonna break it down, put it back and then I'm gonna ship it to Kauai. So, cause I already have an address there. So I think it's gonna be like 250 bucks. But versus paying $5,000 for a Pedego bike, 
I got it for like 1300 bucks. I'm gonna have to add some accessories. I'm gonna have to put um, a, a, a front basket on it, a back basket, um, those fenders, right? So I don't get mud up all, all up on my back. And now I'm gonna have to spend some money and then shipping. So I think it, and I don't know if it's gonna be like a little toy bike. I don't know if it's gonna be a crappy bike. It might be pe better than the Pedego bike. I don't know, but I'm gonna put it together today. I'm gonna ride it, accessorize it break it down, put it back in the box, and then I'm gonna ship it. And I think it will cost me less than $2,000 for the whole setup. And I'm really hoping that it's comparable to the Pedagos that I've been playing with because those Pedagos are really the first um, electronic bike, electric bikes that I've ever played with. And it really got me thinking of, hey, this is the tool, this is the tool that I need to go play in Kauai. So that's what's going on. I didn't think I was gonna go live. Will somebody please share this in the group? Let's see what Lana's doing here. Oh, did you get paint on your feet? Yeah, I'm stepping in the spots. You got paint all up on your feet? Wow, look at it. It looks so much nicer. Or more nice. So much more. It's much nicer, period. Cool, huh? So this backyard is really coming together. Just being able to step on this gravel right here is huge you know and then we got the plants in and we did the front yard let me see if I can walk around the front yard to show you what we did I will walk down here if I lose y'all I love you all um, you know if you can support me even just donate a dollar I have a fundraiser we've raised over three thousand dollars see look what we did to the front y'all isn't that nice isn't that nice? Isn't that cool? That was a lot of work too. A lot of this is a lot of work because in Florida, it's so much weeds, so much weeds. Anywhere you go, a weed's gonna pop up. So you gotta do it right. That's why you gotta put this weed barrier stuff here. If you do not do that, it's like you're kind of wasting your time. But uh, let's see, I think that's it. I think that's it, just a lot. We haven't been going live that much. I know I haven't just because I've been trying to get all this stuff done. I know for me, when I start a project, I kind of like to finish it. And if I don't, I, it's hard for me to go back to finishing it. We got these cool things. These are really cool. Aren't those pretty? Yay, hi Carl. Carl, I think you're on day 30 of no cigarettes. Good on you. 29, that's rad. And he had asked when we were going live, so I said stay tuned. Stay tuned. Check out the papayas. Look at those jumbo mumbos. Look at that. Yeah, yeah. All right, y'all, that's it. Just kind of an update of what's going on. We've seriously been playing on this property and trying to update things. I'm gonna try to work on some doors for her, get some doors hung inside, go put together that bike. And then tomorrow we've got the Bobcat that's gonna come level all of this put gravel there and then hopefully we have the shipping container that's gonna be delivered right there and uh, just continue to upgrade things I've got 42 more days pretty pleased with the cherry on top if you have not made a donation it's roots of hope I will put a link here and pin it I've raised over three thousand dollars my goal is to raise sixty five hundred bucks for my 60 day play in Kauai and uh, hopefully you're having a sexy Saturday. Hopefully everything is going well. Lana, do you have anything rad to say? I do, I do. It's be safe. It's Labor Day weekend. You kind of just splatter paint all over yourself. I'm really good at that. That's why I usually wear gloves. <laughs> I love you all. Hopefully we'll be catching up a little bit more momentum over the course of time after we get caught up around here. This takes a lot of work. It does, especially when you're running all over the place to make sure you got all that you need so if anything let's see this morning I was talking about thinking before you speak hey you know what not to interrupt you let me leave this right here and then maybe you can just do like a 20 minute uh, download while you paint thing tutorial how about yeah. that how would that sound does everybody want to hear me ch chat along I had some things actually was gonna go live about the other day so your head gets cut off yet. this much while you're standing because I'm gonna sit to make there you go. Comfort. There you go. What? What? I'm gonna so, go in and get ready for your dad. So tell me, and I know I won't be able to read this till after I got paint out of hand, and I can read the comments later. 
Love Tell you all. What Bye. What is you would like to see us doing in the group? What is it we can do to bring you in? How can we support you so that you feel empowered and uplifted? Because if anything, that's the whole purpose of this group. Um, I went to Sadna this morning. Boy, was I tired. And I was like, oh, my eye was all tender. And I had had these wild dreams where, funny enough, I was pulling weeds out of sand because we're doing so much here. In the dream, I was doing it at the yoga village. And I was drawing this picture of a tunnel. I was using chalk, a uh, charcoal. And if, for those of you who are artists out there, you know what I'm talking about. I was, I haven't done any art in a while, but um, that's one of my other childhood passions. Ever since I was a kid, I was an artist. And um, yeah, I want to know what what is it that we can provide you because we want to do more of what it is you want to see because we want this to be your rock and rad star family. So I'm over here painting again. Let me tell you this. This is one of my things. When I start a job, I am extremely particular about how I do it. Because the way you do anything is the way you do everything. And that was from Cameron Shane of Budokan. If you've never tried Budokan, one of my besties just moved out to Miami. She, Devon's birthday was the other day. I really wish I could have spent it with her. Um, I also wish I could have spent my birthday with her. But here's the thing. Your true friendships, the best friendships you're gonna have in the world. Labor Day weekend, a lot of you will be spending it with friends and family. Um, cherish them while you got them. You just don't know. You know, having lost my mom this summer, you don't know how much longer you've got. Whether it's you or the other people, choose happiness over being right every time. If you really catch yourself going off in a tizzy, stop. <sighs> breathe because guess what that's your life force and when you're not breathing you're cutting off your vitality your youth your ability to operate in this world and function and if you're cut if you're holding your breath then you're holding back living fully it's one of my passions because my mom had COPD you know she reinforced that while I was up there um, and she was on the breath machine because I realized wow you know I've known all this time that my mother had trouble, and it wasn't just her, her lungs, it was her heart. She had had her heart broken when she was very young, um, on several occasions, I know. And what do we do when we, we've been taught that we have to be loyal, we have to hold grudges, we have to hold resentment. There's a lot of conditioning out there that says we're not supposed to honor those feelings, we're supposed to shove them down. But if you don't feel them fully, you'll never heal fully. And so that's why I'm so passionate about breathing fully, feeling it fully, engaging all of your senses. I could say this a million and one times, I hope nobody gets sick of it, because even I need to be reminded from time to time that life is too short. And the expectations we hold others to are, are not serving us. In fact, if anything, that's the root cause of our suffering. Our suffering is because we're attached. That's an addiction. People don't think about belief systems being addictive, but when you're stuck in them, that's all you can see is what you want and what you expect everything outside of you to be. And so, you know, something I was reflecting upon, you know, most people, they're more concerned with the outside than they are with the inside. How everybody's going to see them whether it's on the physical sense, oh, I have to have my hair perfect, and I used to be like this because that was my distraction. I'm a Leo, it's all about the hair. <clears throat> it was all about, am I in shape? Oh my gosh, I have a bulge here, I have a wrinkle here, I have you know, varicose veins on my legs or something silly like that. People will not judge you based on your looks as much as your presence. If you are fully engaged and fully present, if you're walking your talk, not just talking the talk, People will remember the way you left them, the way you made them feel, long before they will ever remember half the time how you looked, what your name was, or anything else. I mean, truly, if you leave somebody with a horrible impression, they'll remember you, just as well as if you made them feel really, really good. So you have to choose how you're gonna leave people and how engaged you're gonna be with them because, again, the golden rule, do unto others as you want done unto you. If you can exercise 
self-care, self-love, show up where you're at fully and really be what it is you want to experience. What does that mean? It means when you show up to somebody else, set an intention, go in with an open heart and open hands, embracingly, engage, really show up to other people as you want them to show up to you. Because if someone's even in a bad mood, they show up to you in a bad mood, you can shift that. But it's in your awareness, your thoughts. If you let them bring you down, that means there's something in you that is still weak, that you haven't harnessed the muscle on being strong and courageous and vulnerable in. Because when we put up a wall, when we feel triggered, that just means there's a hurt wound surfacing. It means there's something you still need to handle, you need to, you need to confront. And most people are easier to confront others than they are to confront themselves. So again, everything's an inside job. We can work on this facade, this physical look, but if we're not cultivating what it is we're feeling, this outside will be just as ugly as the inside if it's ugly. Because the beauty is gonna radiate from in here. You know, you could be looking crappy and someone's gonna look at you and go, you look so radiant, so beautiful. And I've had people say that to me and I'm like, well, <laughs> when I looked in the mirror, it didn't look so good. But when they tell me, I say, thank you. You know why? Because they took the time to even notice and there's something in you that if they recognize your beauty, that means that you've served them in recognizing their own beauty, even if they don't know it. We're all beautiful beings. We can try to give an image on the outside, but it really is going to start on the inside. I mean, even painting these stairs could be considered a great example of that, right? Where what does the out underneath of these stairs look like? Are they cleaned off? Are they neat? Are they prepped properly so that the water won't damage them, so that they'll maintain and they won't peel and crumble? Because that's kind of like us as humans. If we are not maintaining what's inside, we're gonna crumble, we're gonna flake, we're going to fall apart that much more quickly. So it's an inside job and nobody can tell you how that's supposed to look or how that's supposed to feel. Um, a person can look on the outside to another what appears to have the awesome, perfect life, but I wanna remind you, that's a reflection of the person looking at, at those people, if, or whoever they, they, they deem as having the better life. Um, when we think somebody else has a better life than us, it's only because they have what we are addicted to seeking that we may not have, but we also don't feel worthy because if we didn't, if we, if we felt worthy, we'd have everything that we claimed we wanted. And so that's probably one of the biggest challenges is healing our self-worth, our self-love, harvesting it, cultivating it, and really nurturing it because that's what it boils down to. You can be, you can have it for a day and lose it on the night, right? How many of you have done that? Great example. It's Labor Day weekend. People are going to party. People are going to go to clubs. They're going to lose it in the night if they choose, you know, to try to look for something on the outside to make them feel good on the inside. So I hope this serves someone out there. Let me know if you want to see me do more of my, my reflection videos. I'll be in the kitchen again soon enough, don't worry. I'm under here because if you don't do the underside, it won't hold the seal on the upper side, right? Oh, I just got paint on my hand. Whoa, it's looking really good. Isn't it? It looks, it looks different from oh my uh, gosh, the, gray and black. the, the shade. Red. Like if, if you go, it looks much darker in the shade. Isn't that cool? Well, and the difference between when it's wet and dry too helps. There's my mom. The butterfly's passing. I like it. Mm. Yeah, I love you all. You still alive? Yeah. You What's have, up? Don't you step on my stairs, mister. Check this out. This is Just called, saying. what is this, a stamper? A tamper. Look at this thing. You're getting sand all over my paint, honey. Oh, whoops. You're getting dirt all over my deck. So when something's not level and you get crushed concrete, you just go, hey -ya! Hey -ya! 
lot of this stuff we just buy and we're, and we're gonna return. Um, some of it we're gonna keep, but this gardening stuff is super expensive, huh? Pressure washers, whackers, uh, all the materials. It's the little stuff that's the most costly though. Yeah, but if you do it yourself, if you do it yourself, it's way cheaper because a lot of the contractors charge you like 70 or 80 percent of what the materials are. So just get on YouTube and don't be scared and just learn how to do it yourself and get a couple bids first, right? And then just so you can kind of see, you know, what it costs. But you could do you could do most things by yourself, huh? You just rent the equipment. Totally, totally. So I guess we'll end it there. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of great resources. I would say one of the things that I've done in the past, and I still have a credit, go down to your Habitat for Humanity. They're really good. A lot of times you can get used tools. Why should you be buying brand new tools? I mean, when you look at the fact that there's duplicates of so much stuff out in the world, why do you think there's landfills full of stuff? because people just get rid of it. And you know, one man's trash is another man's treasure, so you gotta stop, stop the waste. That's kind of my theory, you know? It's really easy because this, this country has perpetuated this instant gratification. So when you want it, you want it now, you don't have the patience, you don't wanna look for it, you don't wanna wait, and that's what creates all the waste. You don't want to take the time to maybe separate your recycling and your trash, or maybe you don't want to take the time to build a garden. And so, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why people do what they do. And that's all part of, again, the healing process. And so I can't, I can't stress enough um, how important it is to just check yourself. Because when we don't take the time, whether it's our projects even, or ourselves, that's all a reflection of self-work where we're afraid people will think we're cheap or something. When we're being smart, frugal, taking time and budgeting. Because you can do things on a small budget very easily if you know how to budget. Those who have had to have budget totally know where I'm coming from. When you've gone paycheck to paycheck and you know you're down to your last couple dollars. I think if anybody taught me the best way would be my mom because there was numerous times somehow my mom would always make things work and I know myself I've done it especially over the past few years all of a sudden when I knew I needed something in a pinch it always seemed to show up when I needed it so alrighty I'm going to end it here I love you all huh yeah, sure. Um, there's a bottle on the door that's already been opened and it's really nice. If you bring that up to me, that'd be awesome. I'll keep going because I want to share my booch in the high end. Hopefully you can grab the right one so I don't get it mixed up. Because it, the one I, I just opened is a melon kombucha. And I can't see the comments, but let me know. What do you think of the deck? What do you think of the work we're doing around here so far? Do you have any comments, suggestions? Has anybody done any of this? Do you have any lessons learned? Because you know what? I'm not about repeating the wheel. I'm all about asking what other people have done and what they've experienced. I'm not. <laughs> That's one thing in, in the IT industry that I learned, that it's not that you know it all. It's that you know where to look or who to ask. Always. Smaller bottle, it's a pop top. What color is it? It's on, it's on the middle, it's clear, it's kind of similar. So, I'll tell you what, if anything, get, get, become humble enough to ask, because people want to share, and that's what we're here, that's why this group is created, because we got plenty of rock and rad stars who have had similar experiences, and y'all can help each other. It's so simple, you just ask a question. That's perfect. Thank you, honey how sweet he is. If y'all could see how adorable he is when he gets into mode. He has his moments.
I want to see if this zooms in. Because oh, look, the camera, might be get, the camera might be getting hot. You're fine. Can you see? I want, does that zoom in? It says love, love. What flavor is this? Here's some what what action. This is truth and love. Yeah. Can I have the rest? Yes, you may. Tell them about your possible next show. So I know I'm looking at, I read, I'm still waiting on my dates. So for those of you who've been wondering if you've been wanting to attend one of my yoga workshops, um, I spoke with the studio this week and they're, they're working on the schedule and that's the only reason I haven't gotten a date. But hopefully soon enough we'll have space here and I can just do them home at the house. Um, definitely looking at around mid-October, um, possibly the end of September. I'm also starting the teacher training program as far as supporting it, so that will start also at the end of September, which is super rad. Diana will be joining us, which is awesome. I'm going to move this because I don't want it to get hot. Good idea. That's like for Kauai, I, that's why I got that umbrella, but see now it's out of the shade. Let's see. Hiya! Okay, now I think it won't go. I think it won't explode. <laughs> That's important. One thing here in Florida, you gotta keep your, your your devices out of the sun. They will shut themselves down. I know that from experience. In my past uh, beach videos, I definitely experienced that. Ah, this one spot, come on. I think I sealed all the underside of that. I gotta keep my booch out of the sun. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's so good on a day like today. This is a fresh squeezed orange juice and kombucha day as well because it's so nice. All right, I'm gonna put these on for the bottom because I'm gonna go around this other side over here. So if there's any droplets, I know for those of you who have painted, you know what I'm talking about when I say, look at this, I got paint all in my hand. I knew I should put gloves on. Oh well. These are the, the, the follies of DIY, right? So what I was saying is the teacher training at the studio is starting the last weekend of September, and our beautiful rock and rad star Diana is participating. She has a GoFundMe, so if any of you would like to support her, go to Diana Seaton Fuffer. I don't know how to spell it. I think it's P-F-E-U-F-F-E-R is the last name. Please support her. I know we're all trying to reach our, our dreams and our goals, and you know, every little bit counts, just like Tom's. You know, it's a very important that he do this trip because he needs to have his experience and see what is going to happen. You know, we don't know until we put ourselves out there. And I think it's extremely brave and courageous. He's being very vulnerable about it. That's going to be another huge life change. And you know, change is like death. So when you go from one ex one environment to another, that's, that's life. And so any of you who are out there going through major life changes, remember to be kind on yourself because a lot of stuff will come up. When I did all my different teacher training programs and, and still finishing up conscious communications, for example, one of the things I found that was fascinating was is that I can watch, because I've been doing this long enough, I can watch my thoughts, I can watch my emotions, I can see stuff bubbling up to surface when changes around bend, when changes on the horizon. And literally, you can watch yourself get triggered, you can watch yourself get impatient but the change is what is sparking the momentum. It's all part of the process and you should get excited. That's how I shift that energy. 
is I get excited now. I don't get upset because what is happening is it's telling me it's really getting ready to happen. And when changes come in and you're like, ah, I'm gonna lose my mind, you should stop, take a deep breath and go, ooh, that means it's about to happen finally. And you don't even know, need to know what it is, but you can give yourself the permission to have excitement instead of, you know, nervous, fearful energy, because that's too common and too easy. That's just what we fall into because it's, it's all we know. We fall into the patterns that we only know because we don't know what the newness is yet. So let's finish up this last little bit up under here. I think we got enough of that. So this is definitely going to take, take a second coat. Your dad's going to be here in a few minutes, so maybe you can keep rapping and then maybe oh my God, your dad can uh, play, play live. That'd be cool. And we can give him dad. some kombucha. <laughs> so yeah, my dad's coming over. He's been so cute lately. I really love my dad. He, um, he's come a long way, you know, he's softened, he's become more vulnerable, especially with my mom passing, that was his first wife, and, you know, he watched his mother die, I mean, I did as well, and his wife, I actually watched all three of them die with him. Um, my mom was in Omaha, my dad lives down here, they've been divorced since 80, 1988, basically. Um, you know, life wasn't always easy in my family. My dad wasn't always the, the perfect dad. I mean, what is our society? The man provides. You know what? There's also the allowance of men being vulnerable. You know, men have emotions. They, they don't have to solve and fix and just be the provider. I mean, as it stands now, there's more women doing it. And, and think about how that feels to a man to have that aspect of life taken from them in the sense that, well, what good am I to this woman if that's all I've been taught I'm supposed to be, is the provider. And so, you know, my mom, she had her challenges, my dad had his challenges. The beauty is, as children, we can take the challenges our parents had and we can improve upon them so that we're not passing them on to our next generations. Isn't that amazing that we have that opportunity? That's a blessing in itself. That's huge. But how many of us honor it and appreciate it? We normally will get upset at it and take it for granted. <coughs> we'll be resentful. <coughs> Wrong pipe. <coughs> seen that movie. Okay, we don't want dog fur on the, on the stairs. So, yeah, it's already drying pretty well. So, yeah, this is the beauty of painting in summer heat. Now, hopefully, we don't get a serious heavy rainfall and this all gets to seal very nicely. I have a whole side over here that I can't get to as nicely as I'd like to unless I take this lattice out. So I'm going in between as best as I can. You gotta make sure, number one, you have a clean surface. Number two, you keep people and pets and as much stuff off of it as possible. I mean, that's just a given, right? <coughs> wow, gorgeous day. And then later this afternoon, or early this afternoon, I'll be heading back over to the studio. I've got an appointment to, for those of you, if you've ever been pregnant, at your 120th day, it said that um, the soul enters your body into your womb. And that is when we celebrate in Kundalini Yoga. So the tradition is we have a, a beautiful young lady that works at the studio, and we're gonna celebrate her 120th day Oh, and then I have an admin meeting regarding our teacher training, so yay! Lots of good vibes, lots of good vibes. And if you've ever done anything, let me know, because 
I'm always curious. If you've been pregnant and you've done 120th, 120th day rad kundalini celebration. Mm. One of our yoginis, she had, um, she graduated the previous year and she was pregnant this year, d delivered. We did a celebration for her at the end of last year and she has such a darling baby. I'm just, it's just, it's really beautiful to witness these new beings being born into the world, the souls, they're so illuminated. I'm waxing a little poetic lately, can you tell? Ugh. I know my dad's gonna be like, oh, that looks good. Then he'll be walking around the corner, caught off guard. If he comes in the back, because he might go in the front, right? He might know we're live, you never know. All right, let's see if I can get in here. I get in there as much as possible. If I don't get all this today, I might have to get the inside work later, like at a different time, because it isn't exactly the easiest um, configuration, logistically speaking. And I can do a lot of stuff, let me tell you. All right, here we go. Oh, I, I chipped off and, and scraped a lot of old paint off the other day, which was nice. What a difference this is all gonna make. Doesn't it feel good when you start to see the fruits of your labor? Labor Day weekend, I'm laboring. <laughs> I think I'm laboring every day, actually. I don't think I stay still very long. And sleep is just a, a glimmer. You know, when Tom said pick only three, it was really easy. Rainbows love and sleep. Although I'd go for sex too, you know, you can always have that too. You might get some sleep in that. Who knows? <laughs> Just being real. Um, but it all has to be with the right person in the right time. So everything in perfect divine time. I think I just got dirt on that. Yes, I did. So I'm going to have to clean off this. I might have to step away for a moment because I just got dirt on the end of that. Oh, that's why I got this. So always, you know, cardboard's really good. Like when you have boxes, this is one of the things I, I'll actually hold on to is pieces of cardboard, especially because I am an artist. Um, and cardboard's really great for not just painting, but for packing. For little odd and end things to do. Booch it up, baby. Right. Let me sit down for a moment. <sighs> oh, another really rad thing that I did the other day that I'm super excited about. For the first time Yay. in what seems like months, I finally got a chance to do some self-care, nurturing. I not only did my armpits and a little bikini line action, but I got my legs done. What, what? You saved your These? pits. Does it not feel good when you've had them growing for so long? And let me tell you, it felt really, really good. So what do you use? The M-Joy, right? The M-Joy. So last night, I finally got a chance to break it open. And if any of you have ever tried this, I have one that I've had for years. But unfortunately, on our trip, Buddy decided to chew up cords. So that was inoperable. And the, it's supposed to be, the old one that I have is supposed to be chargeable um, and it's supposed to be, what do you call it? Free of a cord. What do you call that? Cordless. That's the word. But the problem was that when I lived overseas and when I traveled overseas, something got shorted in that. And so I have a, an adapter for overseas so I can keep that one when I travel. But the problem with this new one, I thought it was cordless and it's not. And it's wider, so it's a little harder to get into, like, you know, the, the intimate areas. So I couldn't do what I all would like to have done. So I may have to do a little searching. But I got a really, I mean, it worked really well, really quick. It just, it was more, it was a wider top. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that catch? <laughs> Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Man. I'm trying to play with this new thing. Do you see that? Yeah, you did really well. See? He's... He's honing his ninja skills. I'm trying to, it won't let me uh, like, because you're sitting down. Have you been sitting down the whole time? No, I just sat down because I had to oh. have a 
have to get in this corner and I had to clean off the brush. Get maybe a good back up and no more. That should stay. I'm gonna go see if your dad's here yet. Oh no, that's oh, not gonna no, stay. No, no. You might want to put Hold something on. across it. Do you want something? Don't tell me what to do. I know he's like that sometimes. <laughs> Okay, if that falls, just try to put it back where it was. Yeah. And can I just say, ladies, if you got a man in your life, love them where they're at. Don't try to fix them. I'm not here yet. Because they'll surprise you when you're dead. I really hope he comes, though. Because you know how he always comes up when he notices He usually like, comes around the back, yeah. New things. He likes to sneak around the back because not only does he come in the back door, but he also, like Tom was saying, he wants to see the progress we've made. Because he messaged me the other day asking how we're doing. Right now, I'm trying to get on the side over here as close to the dirt as I can without getting in the dirt. That's almost, it's hard to see because it's dark in this little crevice. Oh yeah, this is nice. This is going to look so pretty. It already does. Mm -hmm. And then what you can do. I gotta keep wiping paint off of me. I'm a paint attractor. And you gotta make sure you wipe off any dirt. You don't want dirt in your paint. It's just not gonna keep it clean. And it might create a, like a bubble or something. So, almost all steps are done. We're on the last two. It was the hardest part about that one was because it had that under part. Hopefully you see me because I see the phone is up above. I think my dad's phone is. with some paint I start slinging it everywhere you know it's spot here spot there paint is everywhere what are you doing on this sexy Saturday are you getting your sweat on or are you getting your tan on I have definitely oh my gosh I got I got an upside down exclamation point on my side everybody see that that is funny <laughs> this is funny actually can you all see that I mean seriously What's going on there? That's how how much I sling paint. <laughs> Let's try to wipe that off now. I'm really trying not to get paint on my body. And you know what? This is one of the things about the mind. The more you try not to do something, and I know this from personal experience, the more you're going to end up doing it. Just, just accept it and try to get it out of your awareness and your own theory of thinking because you're just gonna draw more of that stuff to you. I don't want this, I don't want that. Guess what you end up with? Exactly that. Mm. Whew. Part of me wants to know what time it is because I know I'm limited with time. And I gotta finish this up. So with that said, Let's just start painting away. Put the slip box on, because now the heat is really starting to come down. I'm gonna, we're gonna have to move that phone too. The 
to get some direct sun. <clears throat> but I'm not touching it. I'm going to let the ninja master. Mm. And have you liked our page? Have you started following our page? Turn the notifications on to see first so you're not missing rad adventures like this. Because soon enough, Tom will be in Kauai. When that mouse is away, I'm going to play too. I just haven't said what I'm going to do yet. I got little ideas up my sleeve. I have a lot of different things I want to do. And hopefully we get as much done before he leaves. And I'm going to start focus on tackling the inside of this house because there's a lot of things that have been neglected because I've had a life and a lot of things in life take you out of what you need to do but maybe those are more important see it's about priorities right depending on your lifestyle some people want to say it's time management some of us want to say I'm living because being a homeowner those of you who are homeowners you understand there's never a day when something doesn't need to be done and when you own a home you're just gonna keep on having something to do whether it's maintenance or cleaning you know what I'm talking about All right. and if you don't own a home be grateful because <laughs> it's a lot of work sometimes it's almost better to have a landlord or somebody who takes care of all the details because then all you do is pick up the phone and call somebody to take care of it. And hopefully they respond, because I know there's some slumlords and people out there that don't. I've been a landlord before, and I've always taken care of my homes, more so always gotten brand new appliances, always done really, really nice things. Because <clears throat> especially when it's your income. Oh, man, on my flip-flops, flip too. Okay, we got it. We, we're hitting the flip-flops and the feet. When it's your home, you want people to treat your stuff with respect, you gotta treat those people with respect. And, and if you're gonna do the work and you wanna find the right people, you also have to be the right person. Again, everything's gonna start with you. So, show up as you wanna be shown up to. Yay! I'm telling you, I filled in some cracks that you wouldn't even know. Well, you're not gonna know anyway, because now you're gonna look at it and go, oh my gosh. That looks really bad. This isn't like a perfectly smooth set of stairs either. If anything, there's all sorts of imperfections. But with those imperfections, it has a rad color. It's not, it's not cracked paint anymore. It's not a mixture of concrete, grayish blue, slate blue, and red, brick red, which I'm grateful for because that was driving me crazy in itself. I like a little bit more uniformity. My house up in Maryland was a Cape Cod, and it was really cute and very well maintained, taken care of, because that's just how I am. I had put in a wrought iron fence in the backyard that was absolutely gorgeous. It was a home, historical district of Riversdale, Maryland. I ended up buying, I had to sell it because I just could no longer handle tenants and live down here at the same time, so it made sense. It was time. I almost had the house paid off mortgage-wise, so it wasn't exactly, it was a good investment, because then I bought this house, and I got a much larger part parcel of land for even about the same as what I bought that house up in Maryland for back in, I think I bought that house when I was 24, so I'm 44 now, 20 years ago. If you make smart and smart decisions, smart choices in your life early on, they will catch up and maintain you throughout your life. You just gotta keep up that momentum, like I've said. Moment to moment, make this moment count. Cause it's gonna determine the next one, and the next one, and the next one. It's all gonna even out. in the dirt, but I'm around the edges of the sand where the tile's going to come up against it.
attentive to what you're doing. Mindfulness in the moment, right? That's exactly what this is. This is a set of stairs and you need a nice coat of fun. There's no denying it. It looks so much better. No, I need more glue. My dad's gonna stop and get food on the way. Sometimes he'll pick, he'll pick up. Hey, where do you think we should put the new garden box? Uh, right now that's like the least in my mind. I gotta see it all this stuff done first. I don't want to think about that right now. I think I'd like to do layered gardening. You know, like tiered instead of one big box. So it feels more. Um, I don't know. I like dimension. I don't like just straight lines. As many of you know, I like to flow, right? 